Hello, hello, and welcome to the channel, guys. My name is Christy, and I'm living in New South Wales, Australia, with my hubby, and we still have two of our adult children are at home with us, but most of the meals we prepare are just for us. Um, so let's get started with another what's for dinner. So we're covering the second week of January this time, and I actually went back to work this week after a Christmas vacation, so I had a little less energy and a lot less time for doing better for dinner. But all in all, I think we did okay. We started off the week, thankfully, with leftovers. So I ended my last what's for dinner with a um, vegetable pasta bake. There was onions, capsicum, zucchini, mushrooms, spinach, all kinds of things thrown in there with tomato and cream and some rigatoni pasta. We baked it up and there was so much leftover. So that was Monday, easy peasy. Tuesday, we decided to have a chicken pizziola. I've been making this for probably 20 odd years now. Um, it's originally an Annette Sim recipe. I thought it'd be a good opportunity to use up some of the pizza sauce we had open, some of the shredded ham and some of the mushrooms all open from the Saturday night pizzas that we made. So it's essentially like a pizza, but on a chicken breast, if you can imagine that. So I defrosted two chicken breasts threw some cling wrap over there, and then we bashed them flat so you want them kind of evenly sized if you can. And then I diced up my mushroom, my onion, my capsicum, add in that ham, a little bit of oregano, a little bit of garlic, mush that all around together and diced a tomato. And all of this is going to form the topping of our pizza so i actually lot i lost a lot of footage this week so i don't have some of the footage but i do have a picture of this so that's what we're topping our chicken breast with so what we're going to do now that they're nice and flattened is lay them in the dish put down a layer of i used a pizza sauce i knew there wouldn't be enough of it so i also used tomato paste top that with that yummy concoction of capsicums and you know tomatoes and things Sprinkle cheese on top, and then we're just going to bake it in the oven. There it is, all done. This is really delicious, you know, guys. And it's a really good way to use up some leftover. I mean, you could throw anything on there, hey? So this was mine. I served mine with a little bit of the butter lettuce, some cherry tomatoes, avocado, carrot, and beetroot. And hubby prefers to have his nice and plain. Tuesday night, I still wasn't feeling it. And so we went to the freezer for one of our prepared mince meals. Thank goodness for those. So all I had to do was boil some potatoes. I'd taken a shepherd's pie base out of the freezer. I topped that with the mashed potato, tiny sprinkling of cheese, baked it in the oven. How good does that look? Perfectly cooked there. And then we just served it. So that shepherd's pie actually has peas, carrots, zucchinis, um, onions i don't know i can't even remember there's just so many oh cauliflower broccoli it's all in there so that was all good on its own that was the tuesday oh wednesday sorry so thursday night we decided to go cashew chicken um i bought a lot of ingredients for this which i normally wouldn't buy because to be honest i normally use cashew chicken out of a jar but you know we're trying not to do that anymore so i actually got some chicken thighs um, which I had to cut up. I've got to tell you, I really usually buy my chicken pre-cut because this is the most, just, it's really stomach turning for me to have to do this. I really am not good at touching, um, yeah, cutting up meats and things like that. Ugh. Anyway, we made this sauce. Now, the recipe I'm using here, I'll link to, it's actually one of Naji from Recipe Tin Eats. It's one of hers. So we made up the sauce. It was all lovely. And we marinate our chicken thighs in there first. I found these Singapore noodles. So we popped them in as well instead of serving it over rice, which is my original plan. I'd already diced up the onion and the capsicum. We popped that in there with the garlic and the chicken. Um, I don't know if you saw, but in the sauce, there's actually um, a Chinese cooking wine. There's um, oyster sauce there's um soy sauce there's just so many things and here it is once it finally all comes together obviously we threw that in there with our capsicum the sauce was lovely actually um it was really quite nice but i've got to tell you this was a lot more effort um and a lot more ingredients than just opening that jar from aldi <laughs> so but it was nice it was a winner with the family and um yeah 
people enjoyed it. They, I, we just served that in a bowl. I mean, it already had the noodles in there and everything. So it was a nice, quick to go stir fry. Everyone enjoyed. Okay. Friday night, we did a creamy tuna mornay. This would be another one of those recipes that usually my quick tuna mornay comes out of a jar, but of course we're not doing that anymore. So as you can see here, there's a few things. There's mustard powder, there's vajada, um, vegetable stock, there's garlic powder, onion powder. Well, we're gonna serve it with the penne pasta, a bit of chives there, a bit of corn, um, tuna of course, but we're going to make up the sauce. So we're using the butter, um, this is not dissimilar to when you're making a white sauce um, for a lasagna. Only, you know, a little bit different, a little bit of different flavors there. But I cooked the penne pasta and already put the tuna and corn over the top. And then once we get our sauce together, there's a lot of parmesan in this sauce, actually. So it has a nice cheesy kind of taste to it. I sprinkle it over the top. This would be another one of, I'm pretty sure this is another one I got offline from Recipe Tin Eat. So I'll put a link down below for this one. There was also a panko breadcrumb kind of concoction there with a few um, herbs and spices. And we just sprinkled some chives on top of this before we baked it. And I had a hard time making this because last time I made it, I think it's like, it could have lasted four nights. There was so much. So I was trying to quarter the recipe actually as I was making it because I knew it was just hubby and I. So I've started to adjust a lot of these recipes so we're not wasting so much. So once we bake that in the oven, it's quite nice. The panko crumbs come up nice and crispy and we just serve that with a little bit of garlic bread for hubby and I had a little bit of salad on the side for mine and that was Friday night. So Saturday night was the easiest night of all for me. So Saturday night in our house is generally a fake away night. So it's one of the few nights when all of us will usually have dinner together. So it needs to be something that everyone's going to eat. It needs to be something you know, quick and casual usually. We usually do movie nights on Saturday nights or family game night or something like that. So last week we made the pizzas. This week we're just making burgers. So easy for me. I didn't have to do a thing. Um, we just did step defrost some Wagyu beef burgers. Hubby cooked them up on the barbecue. I already had the burger buns in my freezer. And then we all just made our own. So this was my one. I had mine with the iceberg, the cheese, the tomato, beetroot, of course, because you can't have a burger without beetroot, and a little bit of tomato sauce. Now, because it was such an easy one, I also did a dessert this night because those bananas were starting to look a little bit old. And I already have a freezer full of frozen bananas for smoothies. So... There's just a few ingredients here. This recipe is actually from um, Danny, Danny, uh, Danny at Clean and Delicious. I'll put a link below for this one. Um, and this is a frozen banana treat. So all you're gonna do is half those bananas all lengthwise and then half them again. So you get four pieces per banana. And I'm going to top those with a little bit of natural peanut butter. I'm also going to chop up some peanuts, just sort of roughly there. And we're going to top the bananas with the peanut butter and then with the roughly chopped peanuts. Finally, I'm going to melt some dark chocolate just in the microwave. And then once it's nice and soft and stirred around a bit, I add in just a tablespoon of the coconut oil. This makes it nice and smooth and drippy and gives it a nice smell, of course. And we just drizzle that over our little banana boats. So these are going to go into the freezer and they make a really yummy, I'm surprised how yummy they are. They're a really yummy kind of dessert. So I'm trying to get off of, you know, the chocolate and the ice cream and all those things I would normally be having every night. Um, and I find these a really, really good substitution to kind of, if I'm really, really craving something sweet, they're quite nice. And to end the week on Sunday, we tried a Mexican chicken bake. This is for cooking for one or two people by Annette Sim, that recipe book I love so much. I lost some of my footage here, but you can see that there's onion, there's red capsicum, there's some corn, there's celery in here. We're gonna cook a lot of that up and then it's similar to the Italian chicken bake that I make pretty regularly. Um, only this one has like a Mexican-y type, um, type flair to it. There's gonna be um, chili beans in here and some other um, stronger spices 
bit of taco seasoning so it's got that real kind of yeah real mexican-y thing but there is also the macaroni pasta um so yeah you can see it all kind of they're coming together so they've got the pasta in there the capsicum the corn the celery um the kidney beans um yeah it it was okay. I'd not made this one before. Um, and we just bake that and top it with a little bit of cheese. I throw it in the oven and we were done. So uh, because it's cooking for one or two, you don't always use like a whole can or a whole stuff. And because I'd opened all these cans and I didn't want to deal with them, I actually ended up making... Um, another batch of this and then separating it again into just single serve things to pop in my freezer um just maybe for a lunch or a day if it's just one person to grab dinner so that they didn't go to waste and that was sunday so that was it for this week guys i have it's just taken me so long to get around to editing this so if you enjoy this oh there's my single serves for the freezer so we do have mexican chicken in the freezer if you enjoy this kind of content then please be sure to give this video a thumbs up leave me a comment down below and i will see you in the next one thanks so much for watching bye bye